at you all saw it. And it was a fair fight. He drew first. Well, it's self-defense. I told you, he drew first. He was anything. Well, you couldn't call that anything else but self-defense. Well, it may have been a lot of things, but self-defense it wasn't. And he didn't draw first. You did. What do you mean by that? Oh, that's an old trick. You did it pretty well. Not real well, but pretty well. You fainted with your left shoulder getting him to go for his gun while you were going for yours with your right hand at the same time. It's an old Arizona trick, but I, I have seen it used as far north as Montana. Are you calling me a liar? Well, now, you heard every word I said, and I didn't call you a liar. All I said was you fainted him into drawing with your left shoulder while you were going for your gun with the right hand. So what? You beat that poor man to the draw. He's dead and you're alive. That's the whole idea of the game, isn't it? What's your name? Jason McCullough. What's yours? Joe Danby. And you had better remember it. Well, I'll remember it, Joe. That's about all I'm going to do the rest of my life is go around remembering your name. You'll have to wait your turn, mister. About the job of sheriff. You interested in the job of sheriff? Well, maybe. How much does it pay? Well, none of our sheriffs ever lived long enough to find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, boys, why don't you all go outside and watch the fight? The ladies, too. Very good fight out there. You can watch it, too, Sam. Okay, come on. Let's get out. Get moving. Come on. All right, let's go. I'm Ollie Perkins, the mayor here. Jason McCullough. Fred Johnson, Henry Jackson, Tom Devery. Three of our original settlers, and Fred and Henry are members of the town council. And I represent the minority. Nice to meet you, gentlemen. What that fellow said just a minute ago ain't strictly true. We've had three sheriffs the past two months, but only two of them got killed. Oh, what about the other one? Well, he quit kind of sudden-like. I don't think he had exactly the right kind of temperament for the position. Well, you never have said anything about the pay. Well, for the right kind of man, $150 a month. Well, the spiraling prices you have around here, that don't allow a man to eat and sleep about uh, eight days a month. Job includes room and board. And not at Emma's Tasty Food Emporium. At my house, my daughter does the cooking. Well, gentlemen, I think it's only fair to tell you that I'd only be interested in this job on a temporary basis. Oh? Well, you see, actually, I was on the way to Australia when I heard about your gold strike, and I decided to uh, travel through here and see if I couldn't pick myself up a little steak. What do you want to go to Australia for? Well, it's the last of the frontier country, but I might like to do a little pioneering. I thought this was frontier country, and we was pioneers. So did I. Uh, now, to get back to the sheriff job, if I decide to take it, it'd have to be with the understanding that I get enough time off to do the prospecting I came here to do in the first place. Well, yeah, and you ain't said nothing yet about your qualifications for the job. Oh, don't worry about that. If I take it, you'll uh, be glad you got me. Well, it ain't just a question of you taking the job. It's also a question of you being able to handle it. Ollie, we ain't in much of a position to be true. And him being willing to talk about it at all certainly shows the right attitude. I don't care what it shows. I'm the mayor of this town. It's my responsibility to hire us a sheriff that's not only got qualifications, but that he's going to get himself killed the first time he sticks his nose out of the door. Ollie, hell no, we're going out of the <laughs> What's your point, Mr. McCollum? Well, no point. Just an exhibition of marksmanship. Uh, the bullet went through the hole in the center. Yeah, well, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Oh, it did. You can take my word for it. Yeah, well, I'd like to take your word, but... Would you mind doing it again, Mr. McCollum? You want me to do it again? If you don't mind. Well, I already shot one hole in the roof. That's all right. You didn't take no offense at nothing I may have said earlier, sir. No, no. Gentlemen, just to keep the record straight, huh? 150 a month uh, for the room and board is fine, but uh, I've got to do my prospecting because basically I'm on my way to Australia, and I wouldn't... You just name your terms, mister. <laughs> we'll rush to meet him. Well, fine, as long as everything's straight. Is there some kind of badge that goes with this job? Oh, you bet there is. <laughs> I'm afraid it's a little bent up. Well, it must have saved the life of whoever was wearing it. Well, it sure would have if it hadn't been for all them other bullets flying in from everywhere. Uh, gentlemen, do we have a jail here? Do we have a jail? 
Brand new one with two cells that the whole community pitched in, built last month. Just like a barn raisin. Even the dance hall girl showed up, made sandwiches, and carried on like crazy. It was designed to be practically escape proof. Oh, good, because I think I'm going to have to throw a couple of people in it. There's only one thing. This new jail has sure got everything. Uh, uh, even a new stove with a coffee pot already on it. The only thing it hasn't got is iron bars for the cells. You're kidding. Which we had to send away for them, and they ain't a robe yet. But it's got everything else. It's got glass windows and thrones and kerosene lamps and you name it. <laughs> Just no bars for the cell. That's right. Well, all right, I'll think of something. You ain't wanted for anything anywhere, are you, Mr. McCullough? Not that it matters, because we understand how them little things can happen. Uh, no, no, I'm not wanted for anything anywhere. The chance you was taking asking him a question like that? Now you took a pinch and backed out of the whole deal. I'm the mayor of this town, and I got responsibilities. Question had to be asked. <laughs> now I want all you people to quit disturbing the peace. Clean up this mess. Uh, yes, sir. Anything else? You got a name? Jake? Uh, Jake, I want you to go into the mint saloon. There's a fella in there by the name of Joe Danby. You tell him I remember his name. He's under arrest for murder. I'll be in to pick him up in about 20 minutes. You talking to me? You hard of hearing? You want me to tell Joe Danby that he's under arrest for murder? What are you going to do after he kills me? Then I'll arrest him for both murders. Uh, where's the jail? Just follow me, Sheriff. I didn't go down there and tell Joe like you asked. Why not? Nobody's paying me to take chances like that. Anyway, you never know how that Joe's going to react. Why should you worry about what Joe thinks? Because he's mean, Sheriff. And he's nasty. He enjoys killing people. All them Danbys enjoy things like that. You're faster than Joe. Who says so? I do. I've seen you both draw. You're faster than he is. Supposing it's true, well, why should the matter ever come up? Jake? Who would you like to job as my nephew? I'd hate it. Even if I lived through it, I'd hate it. Look, uh, Sheriff, I don't know who talked you into taking this job or how much they're paying you, but you got to believe me. It ain't enough. He's expecting you. Some of these other people told him he was coming. I hear you're going to try and arrest me. You know, you don't look near as tough as some of them other sheriffs that we've had lately. Particularly that old boy had done run off about an hour and a half after he took the job. Joe, you just make me feel tired all over when you talk like that. Now, what do you mean by that? It's bad enough to have to kill a man without having to listen to a whole lot of stupid talk from him first. And remember, Joe, I've seen you draw. All right, Sheriff, hold it. Now drop your gun belt. Couldn't let him shoot you in the back. Oh, you could have. Is this the kind of town you people want for yourselves? This kind of life you want to lead? I mean, three killings in one saloon alone, the sun hasn't even gone down yet. See, any more of this foolishness, and I'm going to close this place up tight. Yes, sir. I wouldn't blame you a bit, sir. Pick it up, Joe. Come on, pick it up. I'm going to get you for this, Jake. Well, you are the toughest talking blowhard I ever heard. Hey, you might as well come on. Uh, whether you like it or not, we're on the same side now. Oh, yeah. Take it easy, boys. Me and the sheriff takes a dim view of show-offs with guns. Remember what the sheriff said. No more shooting until the sun goes down. Is that what he 